All right, so we're out of the shop today, and uh, this is round two uh, from the last video. We were hoping this was just the connector. Um, the problem reoccurred. Uh, so we're actually going to take a look and see what's inside of here. Um, kind of my guess at this point, it's something intermittent, and it, I think it has to do with temps. Um, so I'm guessing like bad solder joint, more than likely this is probably lead free and has probably went through a couple of, uh, you know, really hot, really cold cycles and probably, uh, has a bad joint, but let's, uh, let's pull this apart and see if we can figure out what it is. Um, I think the, uh, wiring is going to be pretty simple. Uh, we're going to double check it when we get it across, but basically black, red, um, yellow typically is like on, and I'm guessing these are the, uh, two speaker outputs here on this side. Um, but we're gonna verify that in the video. Anyway, stay tuned. And we're going to uh, see if we can repair this Sani excavator radio. Okay, so Pretty simple radio. The one screw you don't want to take out is this one because um, it is actually the heat sink for I'm assuming what is the audio driver. So there's four screws on the side. Um, just looking at the back here, overall, relatively high quality except for whatever wave soldering or what have you. It looks like they wave soldered this. This has been hand soldered. Um, this is where the speaker wires, etc., are connected. Um, I haven't really looked at the reverse side super closely. Um, the one thing I did have to do, um, you get a little bit of potting compound that keeps this here. And let me grab this here and just kind of show you how this fits together. You can kind of see how that works there. So you've got the main interface board on the front. Um, and that little ribbon connector actually holds it together. You can get... Uh, you can get this board most, mostly out before you have to mess with this, but basically it's just peeling this. This is just electrical tape um, kind of positioned above that connector, and the connector comes in behind it. So basically this electrical tape is the only thing really uh, tensioning that uh, connector from getting jarred loose from vibration. Uh, that's not the problem that I'm having with the radio. The, the uh, display works just fine. So um, I'm guessing it's, it's going to be something here or here where this actual connector goes in um and i'm gonna just go through and check all this i thought initially that they had actually coated this board um with like some kind of um urethane uh, but this is kind of an oily substance so i'm going to take a lot of this off um just because that's going to just collect dust and if i actually get an audio output i'm probably just going to go ahead and urethane the top one, it'll help keep the uh, board a little bit more temperature stable. Um, and we're going to go through and put lead, leaded solder on anything that looks like it may be critical. I'm kind of a little suspicious of, like I say, this, these look okay. Um, they've, they've basically ran over them with a file or something uh, to keep this from hitting the bottom. Uh, so that process right there may have yanked something loose or caused something loose. These look really rough here. I'm going to give you a close-up shot of kind of what that looks like like I say these are nice and shiny I need to look at them under a microscope to tell for sure these look a little rougher out here but again this is not where we're having the problem um, but this looks a little suspect here so I'm basically going to add some flux we're going to clean all everything up on the back side uh, and do a retest it, it still is not working even on the bench um, and basically to power this, you got to do uh, red, black, positive, negative, and you have to apply power to the yellow lead uh, to tell it that the ignition's on, and that actually turns the unit on. You can see a little bit more of that sheen. I'm kind of used to seeing that, but it, it's kind of oily. Um, I mean, it doesn't have, really have a smell. I don't know what it is, but we're going to clean that off before we uh, button this up, and I'm actually going to do a proper... Um, urethane coating over this just to protect everything once I assemble it back together. Okay, so basically I've slid this back together, uh, put the connector back on, and uh, kind of made a little temporary test thing. 
I don't know if I'll be able to do this on camera, but basically what I've been doing is just basically pushing this down in and uh, making a connection. You can hear a little bit of audio there. But so we have an audio output. I uh, use an oscilloscope to kind of probe out, make sure that the signal was making it all the way to there. Um, I haven't been able to get it to fail again. I've used compressed air, um, use a little bit of QD cleaner, basically because I can cool the board, heat the board back up. Uh, just to make sure that we have a good connection. I don't know that it's fixed. I didn't find anything conclusively other than those bad solder joints, which 100% that could have been the issue and that would make the most sense. Um, because if you end up with a crack in the solder joint, as it heats up or cools, um, you know, it opens and closes. So that would kind of explain what was going on. Um, and all this is pretty rigidly mounted. So even if you beat and, beat and bang on the outside of this, it's really not going to close that connection so hopefully um cleaning up all those solder joints fixed it i'm going to put it back together and we're going to take it back down to the excavator and uh, just give it a try to see if that resolved the issue um, most likely the culprit again not 100 percent sure things i wanted to capture that may help you out if you're going to replace this radio this is the mounting method um, so basically you've got what looks like a standard den cutout um, and you know a side mount so this is a, a side mount bolt here um, the screws that actually hold this piece in are Phillips head I'm gonna be replacing those with M4 uh, hex bolts mainly because it's a lot easier to get a hex bolt in and if you use a round ball uh, hex wrench uh, you can take this radio in and out a lot easier than you can those Phillips heads and they're less like, likely to strip out um, here on the wiring basically you've got all of the connectors on this side, um, and that would be the gray. Uh, these are the speaker wires, so it's pretty easy to tell. You got gray and gray black, white and white black, or yeah, white and white black. Uh, those are the um, speaker wires. Uh, red is your positive, black is your ground, and the yellow wire is ignition on. Um, so fairly straight, straightforward. Um, if you do replace this radio with another radio, uh, just one thing I wanted to mention, if, if the radio is trash and you're going to get rid of it anyway, if you need a little bit longer pigtail, you can actually pull these four bolts out and actually cut this here. Um, this is soldered on, but it would give you a nice pigtail to attach to your radio without cutting into your sani um, wiring harness. Uh, this looks like a pretty standard connector. Um, I haven't looked it up yet. I think it, the, there's some writing on the back side that I can see, but I'm not going to cut this connector off to find out. But I'll just give you a close-up shot. That's pretty standard. Um, it's a 4-2-2 connector. Uh, again, here's uh, any information if that's of any help to you uh, as far as the radio itself. Um, the rear, this rear piece here is actually the heat sink for the audio, uh, which is there. And hopefully that's it. No, you've got the antenna connector. So this is what you've got to deal with. Um, pretty standard antenna connector. Um, but I'm going to get this back in the excavator. Uh, hopefully that got it. If nothing else, now I know a lot more about this radio. Uh, if I have any more trouble with it, I'll probably just replace it. But now I know exactly what this looks like, where I can get my pigtail. Probably pull this out um, and uh, make it a little bit easier to replace. Okay, so we're back down at the sandy. Um, not a lot of point in like getting this all the way together. Um, worked for a few seconds, immediately stopped working again. So um, we didn't fix the problem or make it any better. Um, still has an issue. Uh, so more than likely, um, I don't know that I want to put a sandy radio back in. Uh, several of the comments that I've seen um, show that these continuously fail, and I'm kind of tired of messing with it, to be honest with you. Um, so probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to basically gently put this back in for now, uh, and order a heavy duty radio. Jensen and a couple other, uh, manufacturers make uh, a radio that will withstand vibration. Um, and I'm going to try to find something that's compatible now that I know what this mounting looks like. Um, try to find something that'll just basically drop in and I'll use that wiring harness. Anyway, I uh, hope this helps some folks out. And uh, this has kind of been my experience with this particular radio. Um, nothing uh, really bad to say about the excavator per se, uh, but these radios appear to be junk. Anyway, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.